another 25 minutes to 30 minutes, especially where whole spine will score over than limited area of workup and where we have to look, we should have the third eye. Elderly female with history of fall followed by subacute onset lower limb weakness on left side, first MR showing there is a compression fracture over here D12 and we should not stop with that. You can see there is a large parasagittal meningioma over here and responsible for the left side lower limb weakness and that is very crucial even though they asked for only lumbar spine to rule out because of acute onset weakness. Young male with frequent tiredness, occasional diplopia and progressive weakness. To rule out, can you switch off this person, please if you don't mind. And whole spine was uh, negative in this patient. When we are carefully looking over it, where you go to look, you can see there is a lesion in the, exactly in the anterior media sternum, which is because of thymoma, the patient presenting is myasthenia gravis and responsible for all these uh, symptoms. 11 year old child with progressive ataxia and you can see the significant cerebellar shrinkage with the prominent cerebellar hemispheric and vermian salsi and mild atrophy of the spinal cord with roomy CS of subarachnoid spaces and you can see the classical ataxia telangiectasia. 18 years old boy with short stature and progressive quadriparesis and classical appearance of the spine, you can see the anterior wedging of the D12 L1 and you can see the cervical medullary junction anomaly. There is a significant thickening of the tectorial membrane as well as PLL and you can see the classical appearance of the cella and uh, there are some lesions in the parasagittal region. Uh, for correlative CT, you can see the classical, this because of uh, mycopolysaccharidosis. So there are several types of mycopolysaccharidosis. This is a uh, harlot type where you can see the J-shaped appearance and because of alpha eluterone is deficiency, the mycopolysaccharide is deposited over the membrane and it is producing significant thickness and you can see the compressive myelopathy over here and uh, you can see the VR spaces reported as VR spaces because of uh, mycopolysaccharide filled dilated CSO spaces and this is very classical of uh, harlot type. And uh, clinically you can also just have a look over it, this is a corneal clouding seen in almost all type, Harler, Shio, Marco, San Felipe, all these things except Hunter you will have this and uh, Bussy eyebrows you will have and you can see the short uh, chubby and you can see the short chubby nose and uh, bumpy facial maxillary region. This is very classical of Harler and this is the back and you can see the front and uh, classical hand appearance. This is because of Harler's disease. If you don't mind you can switch off this. Brain neoplasms with the drop metastasis. Uh, and uh, this is very typical case of uh, malignant epidermoma. You can see the malignant epidermoma with uh, a drop metastasis over the spinal cord as well as uh, cord icon and nerve roots. And uh, it's a proved case of uh, retinoblastoma with enucleation done, presenting with multiple cranial nerve palsies, cerebellar symptoms, and progressive weakness. Uh, extensive CSF ceilings in the cerebellum, basal cranial nerves, and uh, responsible for those symptoms. And you can see the spinal subarachnoid spaces, and the entire CSF space is pasted with metastatic deposits where the whole screening will score over. This is a medulloblastoma PNE TMB with uh, drop metastasis in the spinal cord. This young baby presented with uh, paraparesis for evaluation, which is a malignant, uh, you can see the neuroblastoma extending into the spinal canal and you can see the compressive myelopathy over here. So complete diagnosis we can able to give. Especially neurofibromatosis, when coming with neurofibromatosis, it is the CNS as well as the peripheral nervous system should be evaluated. You can see the multiple cephalid patch with subcutaneous neurofibromas and you can see the large neurofibroma over here and you can see the street of neurofibromas in the lumbosacral junction and uh, it should be very careful and the patient should be also evaluated the intracranial also to look for bilateral acoustic schonomas, pipsner schonomas and uh, sometimes associated with meningematosis. So type 1 it is a disease of nerve, type 2 it is a disease of uh, nerve sheath. History of spinal surgery for lumbar neurofibromania, young female had developed failed back surgery syndrome with persistent symptoms. You can see the large area of laminectomy defect, still the symptoms are not improving. When you are doing false spine, you can see the where is the problem. You can see the 
there is a large lesion. You can see the brilliantly enhancing lesion with the secondary syringe. There is one more lesion in the cerebellum, and you can see the lamina epithelium defect over here. So it's a case of a hemangioblastoma of the spinal cord, hemangioblastoma of the cerebellum. Patient had a neurofibroma for which operated but not gone above, so they missed all these lesions. So you should think of a one hippel lendu disease. So you should evaluate the rest of the areas also. You can see the you can see the renal tumors, the cystic neoplasm, cystic renal cell carcinomas, and the extra adrenal pheochromocytoma, and you can see the pancreatic cystic neoplasms also. So it's a case of one hippel lendu disease. Clinically, patient was coming after that. We can able to see that retinal hemangioblastomas also. So it's a spectrum of disease where we have to work it out. Young female with left sciatica to rule out disc disease. Whenever we are doing whole spine better, you should have involved, it is just a pre-sacral region also, also you should concentrate. This is one area you can see, carefully look this particular region of cervix, but by seeing this disc, do not jump into the diagnosis that we are correct, even the parasagittal foraminal sections are looking normal, just to see the cervix how it will, you can see the cervix is showing a mass and extending into the parasagittal region and you can see the parametrial infiltrations over here and infiltrating the parametrial plexus responsible for the sciatica. So you can go back, you can see this is very important, it came just history of left side sciatica, nothing more than that. So look, carefully looking over the pre region and this is very important, it is a case of CS cervix with the parametrial infiltrations. 37 years old male, similar compliance, left side sciatica, just to look for the pre region, spine was looking, except this uh, Every patient will have commonly L4, L5, L5 so disc disease and you can see the rectal malignancy and you can see the large rectal mass with the presacral space infiltration and you can see the acetabular secondaries and you can see the lymph nodal metastasis responsible for the left side sciatica. Young boy with the back pain and the dual incontinence. When we have done you can see the classical destructive lesion in L5 and you can see the pathological fracture retropulsion of the bony fragments compressing over the roots are responsible for the, all the symptoms. But any clue you can have the specific diagnosis over the condition, you can think of primaries, you can think of secondaries, you can think of lymphomas. Carefully look for the first segment also, something wrong in this particular region and you can see over here something wrong in the So finally it is a proved case of a malignant germ cell tumor of the mediastinum with the metastasis over L5 responsible for the symptoms. And this patient with history of uh, uh, to rule out clinical diagnosis of syringe to rule out uh, a cervical pathology, there is a established syringe is there, but carefully looking in the above segment, you can see there is a lesion in the cerebellum and you can see the classical appearance of cordroid pattern and you can see it is producing less mass effect and the spectroscopy is not showing much effective. It is a case of uh, a disembryoblastic, you can see the uh, dysplastic ganglioscytoma of the cerebellum, so called uh, Legermit Douglas, and so usually a benign disease uh, because of mass effect over the fourth ventricle, fourth ventricular outflow tract, it is producing uh, syrinx. Similar, another case to rule out uh, cervical syrinx, there is a syrinx in the cervical cord, but if you are going above, there is a lesion in the CP angle region and uh, it is a classical appearance of meningioma with uh, minimal extension of the IAM and you can see the dural tilson and the enhancing pattern. So it is a right CP angle meningioma with outflow tract abstraction producing syrinx like symptoms. History of severe back pain, it is a straightforward diagnosis by seeing the marrow proliferative as well as marrow replacement you can say confidently what you are dealing is the multiple myeloma, but few areas you concentrate it is a sternum and it is the hyoid bone and to look for uh, this mandible, if these three and the posterior elements of the spine, if these regions are affected, it is commonly seen with uh, multiple myeloma rather than metastasis. This elderly man presented with back pain, you can see the T1 weighted low signals in the most of the vertebral column. You can think of uh, prostatic malignancy, first you have to rule out. So same sitting, you can go down. Like yesterday we previously do, we were discussing the peripheral zone is becoming significantly uh, low signal and you can see the multiple you know, lymph nodes also, same sitting you can do, you are not having endorectal chyles in protein surface, you can see the beautiful colon peak will come and you can say confidently what we are dealing is the prostate with the periprostatic extension and lymph nodal metastasis.